welcome or welcome back to Four of Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. To be quite frank, I don't think I ever will be. However, you're enjoying watching me, I'm enjoying what I'm doing, so let's keep jogging along at our quiet little pace and have fun. Now, hopefully, you're watching me in black and white. And if the thumbnail and the title didn't give you a clue, if you're a regular viewer, you will know that this is the continuation of my a photo inspiration collaboration series. I'm getting so much better at linking all those words together now. <sighs> I was on the struggle bus a couple of times in previous episodes. What well, was I on the struggle bus? Now, I am absolutely delighted that I have somebody new collabing with me today. It's somebody I followed for um, a, quite a while, let's be honest. Um, I discovered her through uh, Jessica, Stars Hollywood Jessica, who I've collabed with twice now and uh, yes we are going to do rounds uh, three and I think four. Um, and this lady is how I found Linda, who I've collabed with twice and we have already got planned three and four. And that lady in question is the absolutely beautiful Marlin and Modan. So, if you want to see exactly what the photograph is this time to inspire us and how this looks in glorious Technicolor, then my friend, you are in precisely the right place. Grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, here it comes. Hey, welcome back from the intro, which editing me should have done in black and white. So far I haven't forgotten, there's, there's going to be a time, I know there's going to be a time, but the title the thumbnail and the intro uh, to this film will have told you it's the latest instalment in my photo inspiration collaboration series. So many words. Um, I'm going to put the picture up here. Well, I've obviously got it on my phone. Now this is a photo that was actually taken by a friend of mine, Anne, who lives in Canada. Yes. Um, and she took this from her back garden and I just absolutely fell in love so I messaged her saying please could I use that on my channel please and she's like yeah okay if you want <laughs> so uh, this is the photo that is providing the inspiration to myself and the beautiful Marlin. Now it's the first time I've collaborated with her, uh, but she is Swedish, and as we all know, I I, I seem to have a penchant for Swedish YouTubers. What can I say? Um, I absolutely love Marlin. Um, she's so organised and so put together, and produces some beautiful, beautiful looks. Uh, and she's a mum as well, so she's got all of that going on to deal with and still manages to produce really, really good content. So, you know, fair play to your love, because I haven't got distraction, the kids running around, and even I have moments when I'm like, uh, what, come again? So, uh, for those of you who are new, the rules for my series are, you can only use colors in the photo, you cannot add colors, but you don't have to use all of the colors in the photo. And the whole point of this series for me was to see just how differently people view 
what is effectively the same palette because so far all of the looks have been very very different we're both working from the same photo um, and I just it underlines the fact that no two people even when working from exactly the same inspiration pick will do exactly the same look so if you're watching a tutorial with a particular palette and you think oh, I wouldn't have done it I didn't know this so, well, perhaps I'm doing that wrong then perhaps this is the best way to combine those colours no everyone sees different things in a picture different colours call to them in a picture so follow your instincts play with colour have fun the beauty of makeup is if you don't like it you can take it off again and start again and unless you've got a YouTube channel where you filmed yourself, put it on, taking it off and starting again, no one's going to know. Right. So, I have chosen two palettes today. Uh, clearly, my only uh, pastel palette. The Dream of the Vision. Where I should be using pink and lemon and possibly a couple of the lilacs as well. And then I haven't decided yet how smoky I'm going to go with the look. But if I do decide to do um, smoky black through the crease rather than just relying on mascara or a liner to be um, the black of the trees. I'm going to go in with my pretty little palette. It's the vampy one. Because this little palette has the best black shadow I have ever ever used and I got it when it was half price I think it was like 12 quid or something so I'm like mm, yep get in um, I haven't tried the other two mainly because there's only really one that appeals to me um, and just lately they've been doing the uh, buy one get one so I'm like, I only really want one. So I'm waiting for it to go down to half price again or have a similar sort of sale. Um, or maybe I'll pick it up from Depop, who knows. Um, I'm also, potentially, depending on how the look develops, going to be going in with um, this Wet n Wild liquid catsuit um, liquid eyeshadow. This is from their goth collection, obviously, from the Crystal Skulls. And this is called goth tears um, if I do use that I will most likely grab the moon tears wet and wild loose highlight because something in my brain likes that and I haven't used a loose highlight for quite a while so if I use this I'm probably going to use this as well um, yeah okay Face has been washed, moisturised, SPF'd and primed. On my eyes I have got my MAC Soft Ochre Paint Pot, which I have not set. Right, I'm going to zoom you in. And also, a little bit of housekeeping as I zoom you in. Um, my channels are aimed at all skill levels, from complete beginners to absolute experts. I'm not claiming to be an expert before you ask. Um, my chronic pain means I can't blend as quickly as a lot of people do um, and I also like to talk through each step and why I'm doing it a certain way for the beginners. I don't go as in depth when I'm doing the photo inspiration series because it is more about the colours that you're choosing rather than the creation of the look, um, although obviously that is a big part of it, but I do sometimes forget myself and slip into tutorial mode. So. Let's get started. I'm so excited by this. Right, let's have a look at my picture again. So that sky is... I know most of you are going to think I'm going to be drawn to that lilac, but it's actually the pink and the yellow that are calling me. So I think I'm going to start off with those two colours. And I'm going to grab a Morphe M321. And I'm going to go into Dreamy which is one of the pressed pigments. 
I actually cut the box, the outer box, and stuck this bit in here. So I didn't have to keep turning it round and looking on the back to see which of the press pigments. And you can see that Dreamy is one of the press pigments. So, picking up some... Um, do I want to shape this? No, I'll go in as is, I think. So I'm just going to lightly press this and tap, starting on the outer edge and working my way across. Now I've got deep set eyes so I have a similar problem to people with hooded lids. Like if I look down now you can see that's transferred onto my lid here, a whole load of mess. Um, but because I want this to, to really stand out when my eyes are open, I'm kind of... I'm probably going to cut the lid here, to be perfectly honest. Um, I'm absolutely blind now, I can't see what I'm doing. Because obviously the left eye doesn't see. But you can sort of smudge it a bit with a dry cloth, if necessary. Right, so I'm just tapping this across. This palette is lovely. One of my biggest regrets was not having the Kat Von Disease um, Pastel Goth. And I keep looking for it on reseller sites because whilst I wouldn't use it on camera and I'm not going to put money into her pocket, if somebody else has bought it and is selling it for a sensible price, well, then I'll pick it up. But. Uh, yeah. If they're not, um, no. So like I said, I'm just tapping this on at the moment. Because obviously it is a pressed pigment rather than an eyeshadow. Which means there are more colour molecules in the um, shadow. And it can sometimes cause staining. And also it can be more difficult to blend because it has less like talc and mica in it which are the things that make eyeshadows blend easily and I'm going to do the same thing over on this side <laughs> pastel palette and that's looking really quite bright but um, never mind by the time I get the yellow one and start blending it it'll probably soften it down a bit because I think I'm going to do the, the pink and the yellow on my upper lid and then maybe look at perhaps some lilac and um, maybe some like silvery white for the, the way that the early morning light was glistening on the snow or reflecting on the water of the lake. I keep sitting back and checking the shape of them um, because obviously your eyes are not symmetrical so it's always good just to sit back and check you've got the same shape. So you can see I've got a nice curve here and I've got a curve and a flat bit so I need to bring this bit up a little bit here. Yeah if you haven't, I found Marlin through I believe Jessica. Um, I'd watched Angelica Nyquist for quite a while and through her I found Paulina. Um, I found Jessica completely by accident. It was after I'd done my um, These Are All My Palettes I've Got film and if you are a content creator you'll probably know that when you put a film up, whatever you've recently tagged will tend to appear in your suggested or recommended films along with people on your list allegedly but I'm just going to use this same brush just to ever so gently soften that edge a little bit I don't want quite as such a hard edge so I'm just going to give a very very gentle buff all the way along just so it's less harsh I, mean, I hope you can see the difference there 
Um, yeah, so I, and Jessica had put a thing up with all of her palettes and she got like 1400 palettes and I'm like, no, that's got to be a mistype, surely. And then I watched it and it's not a mistype. I mean, the girl's like a branch of Sephora. Um, but she's so lovely and I absolutely adore her dog, Gunvald. <laughs> Um, and then through her I found Marlin, uh, and then through Marlin I found Linda, uh, and I think the other Ange Angelica, whose surname I haven't quite mastered yet so I'm not going to massacre it, um, I found through Paulina. But because I follow so many Swedish YouTubers they are all listed in my description box. But this particular one I'm absolutely delighted that Marlin agreed to... Um, do a collab with me. It's my first collab with her. Uh, she's going to produce something absolutely stunning. I know she is. Right, I'm going to go into Sunshine. Yes, that was my Liam Gallagher impression. <laughs> I, I apologise. I'm going to use the same brush. I've just cleaned it off on a clean washcloth. Of all the Swedish YouTubers that I follow, and when I put this on, I'm going to initially go over the edge of the pink to help blend the two colours together. I'm just using, although this is a a normal eyeshadow, it's not a pressed pigment. I'm still initially applying it the same way by tapping, because obviously it's going onto an unset base. Uh, yeah, Jessica was the first Swedish YouTuber that I collabed with. Um, and then I believe Linda was the second one. And when I first collabed with Linda, she was so shocked because when I asked her because she'd got, I think she'd only got like seven subscribers at the time. And she was like really not expecting anybody to ask her to collab. But I'm just like, I don't care how many subscribers you've got. I don't collab to, I don't look at people and think, ooh, you've got like 10,000 subscribers, I'll collab with you. Um, I look at the person and if I like, if it's someone that I already follow, then it's pretty much going to be a yes. Um, if I haven't seen any of, oh, that's the door, hold on. I'm back. As I was saying, um, if it's someone I've not watched before, I'll have a look at a couple of their videos. And if I like their personality, and I like the way they produce looks, then yeah, absolutely, I'll collab with them. So, I think collabing is, is the the most fun thing about YouTube because I've got a very high brow just there I'm going to add a little bit more yellow into this top corner um, I do struggle here getting pigment to lay down properly because I've got quite deep creasing there so I'm just going to spend a bit of time making sure that goes on okay but you can see now that's a really soft blend between the two colours. I'm just going to grab a little bit more yellow, just on the very tip, just to help blend this corner bit. Um, yeah, I think collabing is the is the best thing about YouTube because it, it it's kind of like a support mechanism, particularly for our smaller channels, because you know we're collabing with people who have the same issues that we do with not getting. Um, recommended and struggling with you know you, you hit a certain number on your subscribers and then all of a sudden the next day it goes down again and then it goes up again and then it goes down again um, and I know people say oh don't worry too much about the numbers which the majority of the time I don't but when I'm trying to hit a double zero number so I can do a giveaway I really don't want to do that and go, oh, it's my X hundred number subscriber giveaway. Only to then 
when people start entering it go, uh, but you haven't got that number. You, you, you've got like three less than that, or two less than that, or one less than that. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a good way of sort of, you know, making friends in this, let's face it, very weird thing that we do. You know, we, we, we sit here and we talk to a camera all by ourselves. Most of the time, and uh, put um, films up, not knowing how many people are actually going to see them, which country those people are going to be in, what their skill level is, whether they'll even understand you. Because um, I have got a couple of channels that I follow which are actually in French, and I haven't used my French since I left school. Um, but I'm, I'm more following their technique than trying to follow on with what they're saying, although I, I get like the odd, like every third word I kind of get, so... You know. But yeah. Oh, I've just fallen down the rabbit hole of watching this one who, um, called... Jessica Kel Kelgard Frozen? Oh my god, I can't remember that. That's awful, isn't it? Um, basically, it's Jessica and Claudia. Married couple. And Jessica's very 1950s style. Um, and Claudia's far more chilled, like t shirt and jeans sort of thing. Uh, but Jessica has chronic illnesses and she's also deaf. Um, and like me, she's blind in one eye. But I just, I have, I've really fallen down the rabbit hole of watching her. I'll link her channel down below if anybody's interested in that. And obviously, I'm all, obviously, I'm going to put Marlin's channel and uh, film in the description box. Okay, I really like that. Like that a lot. Now. I think, because these aren't as pastel as I was expecting them to be, I might go in with that black. I don't want to ruin the look, but I really want to... I think I'm going to go in. I'm going to grab the pretty little palettes, the vampy one. Uh, I might grab a different... Let me just clean this brush off. I'm going to grab very loose fluffy brush this is the Morphe M562 I'm not a Morphe shill I don't have a thing with them I just happen to like these particular brushes um, I'm just going to pick up I'm going into the black which is grave and I'm just tapping off because it does pick up quite a bit as you can see this, this was a clean brush I cleaned all my brushes yesterday <sighs> And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to very lightly run this through my actual crease. Going backwards and forwards in a windscreen wiper movement, which I can do now, because obviously I'd effectively set the base using the pink shadow. And I'm just going to use this brush to really gently just soften the edge of that black ever so slightly. I'm not trying to blend it up the eye at all. I just want to soften the edge of it because anything you do dark recedes, anything you do light comes forward so I might just pop a little bit of this on the outer corner here. The thing that was arriving was actually um, a palette that I've ordered to go into my, when I get to it, 500 subscriber giveaway. Because initially I was going to do a giveaway at 100, but my stipulation was, because about a year ago when I when Tarte did the Icy Betch thing, um, I said that 
when I got to 100 subscribers if Revolution had done their version of Icy Bitch I would buy two, one for me and one to give away. Well I hit the 100 and then the 200 and the 300 and the 400 and Revolution still hadn't produced the Icy Bitch palette yet which is what I was waiting for and they now have finally done their version of it in one of the reloaded iconic or well the, the Revolution Reloaded, because Iconic is the name of one of them. Revolution Reloaded palettes, which were only like four quid. Um, and it's called the Deep Dive palette. Okay, I'm really liking how this is turning out. I'm glad that I was brave and went for the black. But this is by far the absolute best black I've ever, ever used. Seriously. Um, and that's with all of my high-end palettes. It's even better than um, blacks that I've used in like Too Faced, Jeffrey. I uh, don't think I've got a black in my Juvia's. No, I don't think I have. But, okay, this is an issue that I have here with this deep creasing. You can see I end up with really horrible patching just here. Um, it's where my eye was pulled around when I was like five years old at the ophthalmic when they were trying to work out why my eye wasn't working properly. Um, it does cause me a few issues with... Um, yeah, I'm definitely going to have to cut the crease now when um, blending shadows out, as you can see. I do like this little brush though. If you've got uh, particularly hooded eyes or very small eyes and you need a really small brush for blending, the 321 that I used for the upper lid and this 562 um, are actually some of the best small blenders. Um, for a reasonable price that are on the market at the moment um, and I have washed them both numerous times with them being Morphe um, there was a little bit of sheddage shall we say um, but or shadows but not a massive amount and it was only really on the first wash that that happened. Since then, they've touch wood been absolutely fine. Um, I've got about three of the three two ones, and I've got two of these little ones. Hmm. I might just increase some of the width of the black this side just to make it match. This pretty little palette is fantastic. I really love it. Um, its format is very, you know, in, in the way that the, the packaging looks. It's very similar to the Venus palettes from um, Urban Decay, but significantly cheaper. Put it this way, um, we're hopefully planning on booking a cruise to see the Northern Lights either either later this year or tail end of uh, 2020. And um, this is absolutely going to be one of the palettes that I take with me on that, that tour. And hopefully when I do that... I can meet up with a couple of my Swedish YouTubers. Because obviously, I mean, we're going to be in Norway. Um, but there's always a possibility they may be able to pop over and meet us at one of the, one of the, you know, whatever the, the closest destination is to them. That would be nice, actually. I'd love to meet, you know, Marlene, Jessica, Linda. That would be awesome. I really can't wait to see what Marlin has done with this though. 
I think it's going to be absolutely amazing, and it's going to knock mine out of the. It's going to knock mine out of the water. I know that for sure because she just does amazing looks. She really does, and she makes it look so effortless as well. You know. Okay. I think I'm happy with that. I'm just going to get rid of the excess from there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna wipe this off on the washcloth, but I'm, I'm guessing, yes, the bristles are stained. As if we couldn't guess that was going to happen. Look at that, look. I'm gonna have to clean you again tonight, aren't I? Right, now, um, Regular viewers will know that I have my own little method method for um, cutting my crease uh, and it works for absolutely everybody and it's a perfect way of making sure that when you do your crease um, you cut it to the right shape for your eye. I will demonstrate now. You can pick up brushes like this from eBay, really cheap. I got a pack of six for about four quid. These are nail art or ac nail acrylic brushes. And the reason I like them is look how thin they go when you flatten the side of them. That's perfect for cutting creases. Now, Tarte Shape Tape in shade 8B Porcelain Beige. And I'm just going to pop some of this onto this acrylic brush okay and then looking um, let me grab my let me let me get a little mirror so I can look down into it because obviously I can't close this eye what I'm going to do I'm going to pop this quite liberally onto the area where I want to do like my halo eye and then I'm going to look forward and blink a few times. And that sort of smudges it up onto the top lid. So you can see exactly how far you need to take the concealer so that for your shape of lid, when you look forward, you don't see it on the upper lid. I'm just going to smooth this over. Shows you how good that black is. It's just mixing in with the concealer. But that's not too much of a problem, given the colour I'm going to put over the top in a minute. And then what I'll do, I'll turn it round to the side that hasn't got any concealer on it. And I just really lightly press it over the area to pick up any excess or thicker patches that could end up mixing in with the colour we're about to put over the top and you can see it has picked up quite a bit. I always clean this off straight away because it's a cream so I always wipe it off immediately onto the washcloth. Now I do this one at a time um, so that it stays sticky basically. And I'm now going to get, that was this uh, uh, number 12, this is the number 10. I think the numbers refer to the millimetre width but don't quote me on that, I could be wrong. So Going back in with my Dream with a Vision palette, I'm going to go into, I think, let's try a little bit of aspiration first on the edges. This is one of the pressed pigments, so I'm just going to pack some of that onto the brush. And then I'm just going to put this on the outer two edges 
and to do that I'm literally just pressing it onto the sticky concealer And this is a matte shade. I'm going to do the same on this side. I really love these for when you're doing crease work or halo eye because they just allow you to be so accurate. They're also really good for picking up glitters and um, either loose or pressed glitters. They're very, very good for that. Nice, nice, like that. And then I think I'm going to go into. Let me have another look at my picture. Yeah, see, the snow at the bottom looks sort of white with a hint of blue. So I'm going to go into Clarity, which again is one of the press pigments. But is this gorgeous sort of cornflower blue. Kind of matches my kitchen walls to be honest. And I'm going to pop this in the middle of the lilac that we put down. And then I'm just cleaning the brush off and what I'm going to do, just at the very tips of the bristles, is very gently sort of buff over the edge where the two colours meet, each side, just to soften the look of it a little bit, like that, like that a lot. Actually I do like that a lot. Hmm. Right, I'm now going to repeat this on the other eye and um, because this is more about the um, collab than it is a tutorial, I will probably speed this bit up a little bit. I'm just going to grab a little bit of micellar water and take that out there. There we go. Because that will fidget me otherwise. Right, as I said, I'm now going to repeat exactly the same thing on this eye. Uh, see what I mean about how good that black was? <laughs> so I'm going back in with the number 12. As I said, I may speed this bit up. And I'm just going to basically repeat what I did on the first eye. But I'll be able to show you a bit clearer because obviously I can close this eye, which I can't do the other one. Side of I'm going to, I actually quite like this all matte look. With it being more pastel, I think it actually looks quite nice. 
So I'm going to go off camera and I'm going to um, pop some foundation etc on and I'll be back to finish this eye look off and I'll decide then whether or not I'm going to add any of that um, wet n wild liquid catsuit to the mix. So until then, well I've got a bit of work to do, but you're going to see me right now. I'm back. Hello. Ooh, wow, I went a bit ham with those brows today, didn't I? Ooh, yeah. Let, let's just grab the spoolie and uh, see if we can't soften that up just a little bit. Looking a little bit grouch on marks there. Right, I am going to grab a flat top brush and I'm going to go into. Um, let's have a look at the picture. Is there any colour in there that I've not used yet? Well, there is that sort of silvery grey of the, the water, I suppose. Right, I'm going to go in with Visualize, which is not a uh, pressed pigment, but it is a shimmer or a satin. And I'm going to run that underneath my lower lash line, like so. Yeah, I pull faces this side because being blind in the side, I have no peripheral vision and I usually end up bugging myself in the eye. Which is just fabulous. Just kind of linking that up with the outside of the black there. Mm. Yes, I like that. Do I want to puff it out with a different colour? Or am I happy with that? Well, I think I might give it a bit of extra colour under there. So this is actually um, the tart brush that came with my Graveyard Girl palette. Um, and you can see it's it's flat top but it's chunky. I like them big. I like them chunky. Right, I'm going to go into Daydream, which is a pressed pigment. And I'm just going to really gently smudge that all the way along to just soften that edge a little bit and add a tiny hint of lilac to the situation so we're kind of mirroring what's above kind of thing so we've sort of got the, the pink and the yellow of the sky and then the blue and the lilac reflecting onto the water with the trees either side and then this is like the icy snow underneath. Ooh, do you know what? I really like that. I really wasn't sure where I was going with this look when I started it. <laughs> Regular viewers will know this of me. I tend to pick up a palette and just go for whatever calls me. And while I haven't used the um, the Wet n Wild liquid cat suit, because I've decided to keep it an all matte look, this is just a really cheap brush for me. But I think actually it might be a lip brush, and I'm going to go into this loose highlighter called Moon Tears. I'm going to pop a little bit of that. I had forgotten how beautiful this highlight is. I need to use this more often. I'm just going to pop a little bit of this up under my brow bone. A bit of a tip for you when using loose highlighters. I tend to just put some in the lid. Because uh, it makes it much easier to control.
in case you were wondering. If you want me to do a pressed versus loose tutorial with highlighters, I will do. Just let me know. Oh, pretty, pretty, pretty. Right, pick up some more, and I'm just going to go around the tear duct here in the inner corner. And with my eye shape, I've actually found that it's really quite nice to bring it under the tear duct there and just make, you know, sort of meld it with the colours that I've gone under the eye with. I just find that, that that's a really flattering finish for my eye shape. If you don't like that, you don't have to do it. You can just do your inner corner like that. But we all know me, I'm a little bit extra, so I'm going to add a little bit extra. Like so. Oh, I had really forgotten how beautiful this highlighter is. I want to bathe in it. I kind of am at the moment. Right. <laughs> I'm going to pause you while I uh, stick highlighter on the rest of my face, do my mascara and choose a lippy, do something with my hair and I'll be back with the finished look. See you right now. I am back. Right, just so you know what else I have got on my face, my foundation is fast turning into my favourite, the number 7 Hydro Luminous in Porcelain. Uh, the concealer is a mix of Revolution Conceal and Correct in Peach and Tarte Shape Tape 8B Porcelain Beige. Bronzer is Butter Bronzer in Shade Bronzer. Blush is Revolution Vivid Bait uh, Blusher in Bang Bang You're Dead. Might have to actually open it and see what the colour is, might not it? Really nice soft peach, but a, a, a cool pink peach, a cool pink rather. Um, as always, as I have been doing lately, I've been dusting this over the top of my face. This is actually a Wet n Wild bronzer in Reservia Cabana, but I dust this all over with a really big fluffy brush. And it just sort of melds everything together, and if you've used a matte foundation, it gives it a much more skin-like finish. Kind of similar to what the Hourglass Ambient powders do, but significantly cheaper. Mascara is the Catrice Glamondol Waterproof uh, Volume Mascara which absolute dupe for Benefits Bad Girl Bang but cheaper and waterproof. And the lipstick is from Jeffrey's Holiday Collection 2018 and it's Clout. Because I just thought this icy lilac kind of pulled in from the very very top of the sky which obviously normally I would put up here but I'm kind of reversing things so oh and finishing spray was as always slay all day in watermelon so here's the picture what do you think how did I do do you like this all matte look or would you prefer to have seen some shimmers maybe would you have liked me to have used this over the top um, what do you think? It's it's very spring-like, isn't it? It, it? Hence why I stuck my flower crown on because I just it just it just gave me a really spring-like feeling, and I really enjoyed this. So Anne, thank you for taking that photo because it's just it's just beautiful. Right now. Now you've watched this, it is time to go and watch Marlin's film because I have got my cold brew coffee, which I do as a latte, and metal straw, in case people are wondering. I'm going to go and top this back up and I am going to go, uh, well actually I'm going to go and edit uh, this right now. But what I'm going to be doing when this uh, launches is I'm going to be watching Marlin's look to see how different or similar 
and they turn out to be. Oh, and I yeah, I I use the the Wet and Wild highlight everywhere else as well. Mm. Right, as ever, please check you are still subscribed because YouTube does keep unsubscribing people. Uh, if you have come here from Marlin's channel, hello, welcome, I hope you enjoyed it. I've got a lot of other looks that you could check out. Um, this look will be in a couple of different playlists, but if you're interested in seeing just the previous photo inspiration uh, collaborations, uh, there is a playlist called Photo Inspiration. Uh, the collab playlist mm. has all kinds of collabs in it, not just this series. So, I hope you enjoyed this. Don't forget to go and watch Marlin. And now, all that remains for me to say, as ever, is your stay fabulous? And I'll see you next time. Bye for now.